So Paul, we just talked about how you know, our eye isn't that sensitive and there's all these different colors of light that we somehow break it up. Now, what happens when we see these beautiful images in space or even images from our camera? Is that exactly what our eye is seeing or is it some combination of these colors being put together, even potentially colors we can't see with our eyes? Well, it can be all of those things. Some astronomy pictures are pretty much the exact color that we would see with the human eye. Some are using wavelengths the human eye can't see or find a detail. So it's still a color that it might be color as seen by some alien life form, but not a color as seen by us. Some things are just made up altogether. So let's talk a bit about those. I mean, if you take a typical camera like uh, one on a smartphone, the way they do it is you've got all your pixels which pick up the light and they've got what's called, what's called a Bayer mask on top of it, which is little blobs of green, blue and red. Why glass. are there more green than blue and red? Complicated, because so, it's that the human eye is most sensitive at those things. So different companies use different patterns of all these and things. And so it's really trying to pick up almost representing what the human eye actually does see. Yes, and if you, um, you can look at the sensitivity, and this is for other um, a Canon 5D camera, but you can get similar curves for other smartphone cameras. And what's picking up here is what fraction of the photons are detected. So essentially, if I had 100% coming down, it's only picking up almost 30%, but it's picking up a little bit more in the green, and it's picking up a lot less in the red. So basically something between just over four, 100 nanometers and 500 nanometers is being picked up by the blue sensors yep. uh, between 480 and 550 or something is a green and then the red ones out there yep. and so you then get those three things which your processor and your camera or smartphone will then interpret to give you a nice pretty image of your dog or your cat or your so spouse. Our, so or our camera really is breaking up these colors of light and then just reprocessing it to put it back together. That's right each individual pixel is only looking at one color um, and then they interpolate between them to try and get the actual full color image of the whole thing. Okay. Now astronomers tend not to do that, uh, we tend to just have no little micro lenses in front of every pixel. Instead, we have a filter in front of the whole thing. Um, you might have a small filter like this, or this is a really big filter with our uh, colleague Mike, um, a huge, great piece of ultra precise glass there that will go in front of the whole detector. And if you want a color image, we could take a picture with a green filter, a blue filter, and a red filter, and then combine them in software afterwards to make a color image. Or if we just want to look at the red, co red colors of light, we have an image of just the red colors of light. Yes, and it could be that we're really interested in some other wavelength, and so we might have a filter tuned to that other wavelength, for example, a wavelength that shows up hydrogen gas or something like that. So you might have a filter that doesn't correspond to either the red, green or blue that the human eye can see. So in this case, with Mike holding up this yellow piece of glass, only yellow light would get through. So if an object had, for some reason, no yellow light, but all the other colors, and that image would almost appear invisible. That's right. Now, uh, I first of all show you an example of somewhere where they've taken an image that actually is pretty much as the human eye would do it. This is a- it Feels like I'm a, almost there, Paul. <laughs> Mars Curiosity Rover. And it's got a camera, Mastcam Z, Mastcam Z, I guess the Americans yeah, would call yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> up at the top. Um, and here's how this camera works. Um, and it's got, indeed, one of these Bayer filters on top of a detector, a charge couple device, that's easily the same sort of detector you get in smartphone cameras. Yep. Um, they've also got a filter wheel in front, but just take color things are seen by the human eye, they would just put a blank filter here. Mm -hmm. And so they're getting the images through the blue, green, and red, and the different wavelengths. This is the blue, the green, and the red. They're so much like that Canon camera we were looking at. A few only a bit more efficient, ago. and especially in the blue. But it also sees a lot more red than what we see, right? We only see it to about 750 yeah. or so. So in fact, these cameras have a flaw if you're trying to duplicate what the human eye can see, is that they can actually pick up um, light out of the infrared that the human eye can't see. Okay, so it's almost seeing a little bit more detail than what we would see standing there. Um, and if you had an alien with shining a beam at near 850 nanometers in the infrared, human wouldn't see anything. But in fact, it would look white for this because the blue, green, red filters all let that radiation through. Oh, okay, so it looked like this really bright spark. But when yeah. we would stand there, we just wouldn't see it at all. Now, luckily on Mars, there aren't many aliens shining <laughs> torches in the infrared. There's actually not much light down this. This isn't a great flaw. Yep. So in fact, it, it is fairly close to what the human eye could see. Okay. And if we take a typical image, this is dull, reddy, brown color. And this was what it should look like if we were standing there looking at it. That's true. Now, part of the trouble is the human eye does an automatic white balance. Yep. 
um, when we're indoors around uh, in, um, orange light it looks white to us yep. and also looks white when you're outside when there's much bluer sunlight so it might be that after you'd spent a few hours here, your eye would adjust and it would stop looking so browny red to you. Yeah, but I mean, I guess that happens here on Earth, right? Our eye adjusts depending on where the environment is and where we are. But this is a, so it's very complicated trying to reproduce what the human eye does because the human eye does so much processing and so much white balancing and things, mm. which keeps digital photography people up at night. <laughs> um, but roughly speaking, this is an attempt to make the red, green and blue that the human eye would see and to reproduce that using a camera. Okay. But sometimes you don't want to do that. For example, they had a filter wheel there where they put extra filters in front, and that means they can look at particular wavelengths. So this is all the filters on this Mask Cam Z. And this is, and again, because like it's great to be able to see what we see, but it's also there for science, and you want to see more detail than the human eye can see. So it could be that a particular wavelength here is useful for working out whether you've got olivine in a rock or carbonates or something like that. We'll talk a bit about how you can use particular wavelengths later to see these things. And so when they're not taking pretty pictures for uh, media consumption on Earth, they'll often have one of these narrowband filters, and they'll take a photograph for rock outcrop to try and work out what the rocks are there. If you go to the Hubble Space Telescope, something we've both <laughs> used a lot, this has got a lot of filters on, right? It, I, it, it, I, I can't even count how many filters have been used on Hubble. And more narrow than the ones that we just saw on uh, Mars, but also wider as well. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes. And here's an example of a, an image where they've taken, in this case, Jupiter, yep. and they've used an ultraviolet filter, which is what's showing up as blue So here. we can't see this with our eyes, Yes, but it's actually there. So what they've done is they've taken the image with an ultraviolet filter, and what they found is the aurora on Jupiter, which you couldn't see using the normal blue, green, and red, because it's only out in the ultraviolet. And, and they've done a colour image where they've shifted that ultraviolet light to look like blue light. And then added on to the colours of light that we can see to see an image. So it's really combining different colours in a way that is true but not true to some degree, depending on what truth you're talking about. So this is what an alien who had ultraviolet vision might see. Mm. Or if I guess if we adapted to live outside the Earth's atmosphere, we would do see ultraviolet light, right? We couldn't see this through the Earth's atmosphere, but because Hubble's in space, it can In fact, see there it. are some humans that can see ultraviolet. Um, it turns out the ultraviolet is, can be picked up by the uh, retina of the human eye. It's actually the front of the eye that blocks it. And they found during World War II, some people had cataracts and then the eye, front of their eye replaced with glass. And this then allowed them to see ultraviolet. And they were actually used, spies would shine ultraviolet light from coasts at night. And these people with these glass eyes could see it. Because they're picking up a color of light that you and I couldn't see, but someone else with that detector eyeball could see. So I, I kind of think this is real colors. Not yeah. colors as a human eye could see it, but it is three different wavelengths, much like the human eye and does. And it really is just, being emitted. But they're just different wavelengths from the ones the human eye can see. Why be limited by the pathetic human eye? <laughs> The real yeah. shape is radio astronomy, um, or often something like this. For example, this telescope, this is the Australian Telescope Compact Array up at Narrabri, and this, for example, could map some part of the sky to wavelength in the radio, say 20 centimetres. Now, obviously, I can hear radio, but I don't tune on the radio in the car and see those wavelengths coming through. But any image is just, here's how much light's coming from this point, here's how much is coming from that point, like we talked about earlier. Yep. And that's what a radio telescope can say. It can say, here's how much radio is coming from here, 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 and that will get an image. And here's what the image looked like if you looked at it with a human eye. Not that exciting. <laughs> I mean, we can't see radio waves. That's right. But if we could hear it, it would be there. There's actually physical emission. There's physical energy. There's emission energy. coming here. Yes. So what they would actually plot, this is not a very useful plot. Yeah. What they'd actually plot is the intensity of the radio emission coming from every point in the sky. So this would be like the brightness our eyes see in a color. Yeah. So it's kind of, one way of thinking of it is it's shifted 20 centimeter down to white light or yep. something like this. So what it's doing is every pixel it's telling you how strong the radio waves coming from that direction are. So there's, so there's more light coming from here and here, none from here, just a little bit there and there and there. Yes. Um, and often these people will artificially colorize these intensity maps. Something like this. this is actually exactly the same data as on the previous plot. What's happened is they've just said if it's intense, they'll make it orange. If it's less intense, they'll make it so blue. So as there's more light, they've made it red. So that would have the most and then the darker blues. And the benefit of this is you can pick out some of the details that are a bit harder to pick out in something like this. But it's not real color. This is just a mapping for intensity. But a lot of images of astronomy are like this and not true color. This is what I'd call false color. But this is really to help us aid to understand what is happening because we also have our eye, which needs to pick up these subtleties to understand what we're seeing. So 
It's always visualization. We're taking data that's much richer than the human eye can see, and we're somehow squashing it down so we can put it on a page or a computer screen so that we can interpret it. Because at the end, the point of all this astronomical data is for humans to be able to say, oh, I've discovered something. So, and if we don't view it in a way we can't see it, we're not really seeing anything. That's right.